Fantastic. So we are live now. And I would like to welcome everybody who's online. You've already said hi here on Zoom. So everybody else joining us online, you are welcome to the Kingdom Embassy Budapest. Amen. Right, so which Rekha is translating for me? Or we, we don't have anybody. I don't know if we need to, because I don't see anybody who only speaks Hungarian. That's why I kind of went through the list. Right now, we are all, in, you know, we all yeah. speak English. So, so it's fantastic. just easier. Okay. So you can just so flow I'll, faster. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will flow just like that. Okay, welcome, okay. everybody. So... Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for this evening. We thank you for all this wonderful family that you have come together. We thank you that you have given us the power, the authority and dominion to reign as kings in our lives. And now, Father God, as we submit and surrender ourselves, our hearts are opened. We are glad that we are going to receive fresh news, fresh faith, fresh miracles in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So tonight we're going to start with a scripture of Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Revelation 1 6. Revelation 1 6. And as made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 And uh, Romans 5 17 as well, please. Romans 5.17. Yeah, Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense that reigns through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Father, bless the reading of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Anna. So we look at Revelation 1.6 and we see that he has made us kings and priests. He has made us kings first. So what does that mean? As kings, we have dominion. We have authority. We have the power that has been given unto us. And then we have been given priests. We have been made priests later on, which is a good thing as well, because as kings, we already know what to do. Only we become on the priesthood side when we start praying, because we pray to know. But as kings, we reign. And Romans 5, 17 says, and those that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. And I repeat again, shall reign through one Christ Jesus. What does reigning in life actually mean in this scripture? My understanding, and I'm sure everybody is going to be the same, it means exactly what it sounds like, reigning. In essence, Jesus already gave us victory at the cross so we can enjoy the benefits of every single blessing that he has given us. Every born again believer is a king in life. So, and the kings we reign in their domain. Because you see, the scripture also tells us that we come from a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Kingdom, when this one is put to separate the kingly domain. So, we need to know and accept what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Because if we do not know what was done for us on the cross and what Jesus has accorded unto us and he came back to restore for us, then we wouldn't know how to operate. In exactly what you're doing because already we have the power we have the authority to effectively exercise dominion over the enemy because the enemy comes to deceivers that the things that are happening around us are going to overtake us and that have dominion over us that have power over us but in essence it's the other way no matter what circumstance comes around our life jesus fought the battle for you you just need to reign in victory because we see in uh, the book of First John chapter, First John chapter four verse four. Let's see, First John chapter four verse four, please. Yeah, First John chapter four verse four. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because He who is in you is greater, is greater than He who is in the world. Amen. Amen. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Jesus lives in us. So the greater one, our Father lives in us, you have been imparted by the nature of God. 
the moment you are born again, your DNA was supplanted to the divine DNA of God. So as God is, so are you. God gave you the power to be God on this earth. Not God with a capital G, with a small G. And so be as he has given to you. Because you see, nothing can happen on this earth unless you do it. The moment God gave you the authority, the power, and the dominion, he cannot come and do it. So it's for us to reign because he has imparted his nature of righteousness in us. You know, the scepter of a king is righteousness. And God, without righteousness, he cannot rule. That's why he made us righteousness through Christ Jesus. Amen. Because good nature makes you like him. You think like him, speak like him, act like him. Everything you do is like God. Remember when Jesus walked on earth, what did he say? I say what I hear the father say, and I do what I see the father doing. Because he has brought us up. When Jesus died and rose again, he brought us up to sit us in the heavenly places with him. We see this in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 6. Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even who, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He brought you up, raised you to be seated in heavenly places with him. We are on this earth, but actually not on this earth. We are just sojourning because we come from the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is, is our home. That is our residence. But we're just here to rule and reign and do what the purpose God has called us to do. Because we see like the opening scripture we read was Romans 5.17. The amplified version actually says it better. And it's, so no matter how hard or difficult the circumstances you're facing right now, it can be looming on your face trying to show you and make you think and feel that it's over, take charge as a king you are. Speak to that mountain that is in front of you and it will move. Use your voice command. You know, God never brings you to something that he knows that you cannot conquer because he knows you're already victorious. You're more than a conqueror. So every mountain, whatever that might be to you, either mountain or finances, maybe something to do with your health, something to do with family, anything to do maybe with the challenges, just every single thing that whatever can be within the form of a mountain to you, it has your voice command enable on it. Because when you speak, it will move, whether it likes it or not. Because you might say that the situation you're facing is too difficult. Oh, that I don't understand what you're going through. You're caught between a rock and a hard place. But the child of a king, not you. Not you. There's always a way out for you. You only have to believe and trust that what Jesus did for you on the cross, that is actually true and sure, and receive it. Remember, by grace, we are saved. By grace, God has given us gifts of righteousness. And once you have it, because you just have to put it into effect, being able to live supernatural above the circumstance of life, because you're a supernatural being, so you cannot operate like me, a man here on earth. Every day when you wake up in the morning, there's always going to be something very good that is happening that you, you've thought of something positive, something great. Based upon you receiving God's grace and righteousness, you think positive, you think towards what you're doing. But sometimes something is going to come around your way, trying to make you, to detour you, to break your focus. And now this is where you win. I can remember where the word of a king is, there's power. And you have God's grace. God's grace enables you to talk in power over the weakness by stepping out of your own ability and into his ability because you're his child and he expects you to operate like that. His free gift of righteousness allows you to free, to, to live free of all condemnation you have on earth. Because you know, sometimes I've had people when they come to me and they tell me, okay, this is what they're facing and they're thinking that, okay, if I ask God to do this for me, he's not going to do it because I did something, something yesterday or a few days back or a week or even years back. So they live sin conscious, not knowing that they are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And that the righteousness of God, you have full confidence and secure that God has done it already for you. So you need to go and take. And whenever it looks impossible, one thing I've actually realized is that impossible is where your things are. 
impossible is where your things are. So the enemy will come and put a roadblock so that you don't go over to the other side. But you have to march forward. It's like if there's a rock, if you keep hitting on it and you keep smashing it, it will break out and it has to move. And the moment you go forward onto the other side, you have victory because whatever is happening around you is not happening to you, it's happening for you. Why am I saying this? Because it's a light and momentary affliction. It is light and momentary. It's very light because you cannot compare it to the glory of the Lord that is going to rise out of you. Because what is happening on the outside of you is temporary. But what is happening on the inside of you is eternal and nobody can take it away. And whatever is going to be seen in you, the person you're becoming, you are actually being crushed and being molded to be more and more like Jesus. And the more and more you're like Jesus, the more and more you have the kingly domain and the authority to be able to live and talk and act like, like God. Amen. You will never take up control of your life and rule over circumstances by your own strength. But you can reign as a king in life by walking in the victory that Jesus has done for you. Amen. I mean, so remember, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not below. And your time to reign has come. It is right now. You cannot postpone it. You cannot say, okay, tomorrow I will do this. Tomorrow, wh why would you wait for tomorrow? If you don't start now, then when? God is doing a new thing for you and he's expecting you to walk into it. Because sometimes we find that we are waiting for God to do something when God is actually waiting for us. Because when he finished and he rested on the seventh day, he rested so that we can carry on. So he's not resting because he's waiting for us to get it. No, no, no. We need to step up. We need to move forward. We need to take charge. We need to take action. Recognize you're a king and accept what Jesus has done. Live the life the king of the king you are and decree over every circumstance. Remember, where the word of the king is, this power. Because you are the God class. And you speak like God, you act like God, and the only thing you get is God's results. The culture of the kingdom is always the king's agenda. And what is the king's agenda? The king's agenda is for us to rule over everything on earth and understand our identity. Because if you do not understand your identity, you will not know your purpose, you will not know who you are, and you will not know where you're going, and you will not know where you're leading people. Because Jesus, when he came back onto earth, he came to reintroduce the kingdom concept back to us. Because this is what Adam lost. He lost his identity. The enemy came and lied to him who he is not, and he believed. Remember Genesis 1, 26, what it says, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Image before likeness. Why image? Because image, we have to know who we are, and then likeness of God. Image and likeness, and then what follows next? Dominion. Kings have dominion. Kings have dominion, and this is how we're supposed to live. Amen. Let us have a look at First Peter chapter two, verse nine, please. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. We are a royal priesthood. We are royalty. A chosen generation. We are chosen. You know how beautiful it is to be chosen? Meaning we are the elect of God. As royalty, we are part of the kingdom and it's never ending. We are here and part of an eternal purpose because we are a priesthood of kings. We rule because we know the purpose and, and the agenda of God for us. He chose us and so we are, we are actually God's children here on earth. The earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So what are we waiting for? If we do not rule and reign as the kings we are, people are not going to see the God in us. People, you see, God is a spirit and we are his flesh. So it is for us to reveal him to the world. Amen. Let us look at Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 15, please. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. Amen. 
when you know and understand your identity as divine royalty, you begin to move differently. And the world around you will respond to you differently as well. You'll be surprised, but whenever you are around people, even the ones that you don't know, if they, they happen to be observing you, your presence, how you operate, how you talk, how you treat people, how you do things, that indirectly tells them what your culture is. And it will determine how they're going to relate with you. And also, it's going to determine the benefits you get in life. Because your nobility is seen in how you treat people around you. It's clearly a reflection of who you are on the inside. Because you're doing it subconsciously. It's your culture. Because remember, as the king's daughter or a king's son, you are a sign and a wonder. When people look at you, you draw inspiration to their eyes and it turns the life. Because sometimes people have seen a lot of things happening around them that it counteracts them. People are not used to seeing the good stuff. Even if they see the good stuff, they're going to totally ignore it. But if you're constantly, let's say, for example, in an environment where you meet with people every other time in the offices or even in your neighborhood, but if they continuously see that you are a sign and a wonder, they will recognize their greatness and the nobility in you. Apostle once said it, we are live streaming God to the world around, to the world around us. So people are watching, people are seeing. So as a king, you get your power from God. And as a king, King's glory is the place through people around him. So for example, if you're in a leadership position, how you treat people is going to see, it's going to radiate. Your subordinate is going to radiate all the way down. And that is how it's going to be known that, okay, this person is different. You've got to choose and make a choice to consciously be different, especially if it's in a corporate environment. Because the times you work in environments which are very toxic, people are just going day by day, very busy doing things, doing things and not realizing that they are affecting other people around them by just being too busy and ignoring and just getting by and, and ignoring people. It's not nice. But as the kings we are, we need to know in part of our reign is ministering love to heart and world. But how do we minister love to heart and world? Being kind, being patient, just being nurturing, you know? Because when the enemy wants to attack a, a king or a leader, he always likes to attack the identity. So if your identity is snobbish within your environment, if your identity is shutting people off, if your identity, these are the things that people are going to know you are. But you have to operate on the contrary and do things differently, move differently, because the sign and wonder that you are, we don't operate like mere men here on earth. Amen? You are a king, so you have to understand that our origin is from God. Let us look at John chapter 13, verse 3. John 13, 3, please. Oh, should I read again? Yes, John chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Amen. Amen. Jesus spoke knowing that he owns all things. Because king owns, kings own things. And you're a lender, not a borrower. Amen. And that is why your speech will really, really lead where you're going. And for you to know this, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind every day. Who or what are you being transformed to? The image and likeness of God. God says, have no other image. Have no other image. Image is something that you're looking at and something that how you're looking at yourself on the inside. What you're telling yourself. And you can be transformed daily by reading the word of God, meditating on the word of God, and knowing that this is who Jesus has said you are. So you have to believe and take the course of action. Have you ever probably lost your keys or something and try to look around for it, it's just like lost identity. Something is not there. Either the car keys or to your house are lost and you're trying to unlock and it's really, really, really frustrating. Such a horrible, frustrating feeling. So you have to know that you've got to take back your authority if by any chance you happen to have lost it somewhere. Take it back. You have been given this by God and no one can take it away from you. So God is counting on us to move in the power and authority that he has given us. Amen. So I would give you like five 
points that are written down. These are not just the five points that this is exactly what you should you should do, but just something that I put down the five points to to your God given authority. Key number one is by faith receive the gift of grace and righteousness of God. Have faith, receive the gift of grace and righteousness. You cannot earn this anyway. It's already freely given to you. The same way you receive Jesus Christ by faith, everything else you receive in the kingdom of God is by faith. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, people say the, the opposite of faith is, is that no, the opposite of faith is actually not even believing what God has given unto you. We have uh, previously read um, Roma, Romans, let's read Romans 5, 17 again, please. Romans 5, 17. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense that reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we have received Jesus Christ and we will reign by grace and righteousness because it's already been given to us. Amen. Point number two, write this down. Develop a prayer life. Develop a prayer life. Constantly be in fellowship with the Father. And this is actually, we get this example from Jesus. Jesus did not just hang around with people. He was very intentional. He ministered to people, but he, he had fellowship with the Father. Because when you have fellowship with the Father and you're spending time with the Father, you are going to be able to minister to the people from a point of overflow. Because you learn the heart of the Father and, and you know what? You get to hear him more and more and get acquainted to the voice of God because sometimes the world is so busy. We have kids running around, we have family to take care of, we have businesses to take care of and X, Y, Z. But when you're constantly fellowshipping with the Father, because sometimes even with ministry, sometimes we get so busy with ministry, we're doing the work of God, but we forget about spending time with God. But unless you spend time with the Father, you're not going to be able to minister to people. Amen. Let us have a look at First John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. First John 5, 14, 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Amen. Amen. You learn to hear God more and more. You ask according to his will. The will of God is in his word. It's not anywhere else. You know, sometimes people will ask you, okay, I don't know what the will of God is. The will of God is, is the word of God. When you constantly in fellowship with him, you will know what he's saying. Point number three, study his word. What does it say about you? Because sometimes we read the Bible and we see like, okay, this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, it's as it says, but what about now? The God of the God of Marjorie, the God of Rebecca, the God of Martha. Put your name on there and live it. Because the Bible is not a book about a set of rules. The Bible is about the king, who is God, his kingdom, the infants, and family, his children. So the moment you understand the Bible like this, you know this is about the kingly domain, about the influence, about our father and our family. You will understand actually this is what actually who, who you are and this is where you're coming from. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, your word is the lamp unto my feet and the light to my path. His word will lead you because everything was predestined for you. So his word will lead you. The more you know the word of God, he will lead you directly to where you're going. Amen. Point number four, grow in faith grow in faith let us read mark 11 mark 11 verses 23 to 24 mark 11 23 24 for surely i say to you whoever says this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and there's not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says therefore i say to you Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. 
Amen. Believe that you receive them and you have them. That's why you have to constantly grow in faith. Realize that nothing is impossible with God. And how do you grow your faith? Reading the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Listening to the right scripture. Remember, whoever has your ear has your future. Who are you listening to? Are they preaching Jesus? Are they pointing towards Jesus? Is that word edifying to you? That is how you grow your faith. And even more and better, putting it into action. Because once you've, had, you've read the word, you've heard the word again, you put it into action, there has to be transformation in you. If that word is not transforming you, you have to change it. Because it has to transform. It's just not for your knowledge. It transforms you because that means you're getting results. And that is how your faith will keep on growing. Amen. Key number five, be a giver. Be a giver. Giving is a kingdom principle that often those that you could never imagine. Give, you, can, you can give your time, you can give by sowing seeds, you can give by your talents and whatever, whatever it is operating in the, in the fivefold ministry of any gift that God has given unto you. Because God himself demonstrated this in John 3.16. He gave his only begotten son. And when he was raised up, he became the firstborn among many brethren. So when Jesus was raised up, he was raised up with us. Yes, we are brethren. Yes, we, there's no male and female in the kingdom of God, but we are all brethren because he's our big brother. When you invest in the kingdom of God, everything else will be given unto you. All the other trinkets are going to be added unto you. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So remember, we have been made kings and priests. Our time to reign has come and it's time for you to take over. It's time, playtime is over. You need to step up because there's some people who are actually waiting for you to step up so that you can move forward. Because when God put us here on earth for a purpose, there's other people who are actually aligned into us. So if we don't take charge, then the other, we are slowing down other people. And then if we don't do what we're supposed to do as the kings we are, there's other, someone else is going to be raised to come and do what we're supposed to do. So now you need to stand still on Christ, the solid God and not be moved by the waves or whatever it is you're seeing around you. Because every other day there's going to be something that is coming up. Someone is going to come and tell you something very different. But what is your focus? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Where are you focusing on? Just focus on the positivity. Remember, when you look forward, don't be moved by what is on, your, on, the, on the side. Move forward. Anything that's going to distract you from moving forward, in your, in your godly focus needs to go away. Amen. I trust you have been blessed by the word and go back and listen to it again. And remember your time to reign has come. Your time to reign has come and the time is now. So I would like, uh, Reka, if possible, if let's see if there's anyone with a testimony or, or a prayer request. We can take that as well. Yeah, anyone with testimony or prayer request? We have Martha joining us from London. Praise God. Alexander from Holland. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for your trip? Yeah, we uh, have uh, yeah. that's in, in testimony. We have received our visa for Kenya. In, oh, in 24 hours, it was wow, okay. really, it, it did on my birthday, two and a half hours, three that I together to make it clear, but wow. we, were, we were doing it. And uh, this day we have our um, yellow fever vac vaccination, got it. Uh -huh. So that's clear and... Uh, Saturday we leave to Kenya. Saturday morning. Wow. So Amen. we are excited. It's and it's it's in step on financial water. I can of tell you. So I, I I I look forward to see what God is doing in the, in our midst with our group, with Apostle Charles, and uh, I. I have uh, the strong idea what you say, my, my, my Marjorie, who Jesus saw, saw the Father, who Marjorie 
they see Jesus, they see the Father, they see love. And that's, that's the, the key of our family, love. Amen. We reign in yeah. love. Yes, yeah, so I'm very glad to have you here. Frida is going to bed. We had three amazing, hardworking days back, so she's sleeping now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alexander. You're such an inspiration, really. I have to say, amazing, amazing, really. I, I look forward to hear more when you guys are down there. Hopefully, oh, yeah. we're going to be able to catch up with you guys at one point. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Rika, oh, yeah. over to you. Me? Yeah. Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying special right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> How was your week? Pardon? How was your week? Weeks. Busy. <laughs> Have you, you found the work yet? No, I had other things. So oh. Is there thing. anything we can pray for you for? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Everybody seems to be doing wonderful and gearing up for the trip. Yeah. Pastor okay. Marjorie, are you thinking about joining since you don't have a problem with the Kenyan visa, I'm sure? Mm -hmm. Yes. I I'm actually considering, yeah, because I'm just trying to sort out a few things here. And um, uh, yeah, I have to be positive because I believe all things are possible. Yeah. Yeah. But so you are Kenyan, I, I are you not? At, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kenya was my transit point from yeah. heaven. Yeah. So all I'm saying is you don't have any problem with the visa, obviously. No, not at all. Good. Yeah. Okay. I I I have <laughs> one. I have one. I have one testimony. Uh, yesterday, my birthday, I, I met a friend in the shopping center. And yeah. then he, as I invited him to have coffee and cake with, with me because we were busy. So I don't, don't have time for him to celebrate my birthday with many people. But he came and then he told me I have some ear problems. I said, oh, really? Well. Do you want uh, do you want to be healed from your ear problems? And Fides had the same question. Said yes, please. But I want to experience Jesus too. Said well, if you ask, you can have it. So we uh, and they say, oh, I have to stand and to proclaim and to do. Say no, hang in the couch. <laughs> I come hanging near you, and we do it easy. And so. There is uh, um, some there's healing in his ear, just. And he uh, wrote me back this day. I sent him all the uh, videos from Germany with his Apostle Charles. And he said, oh, I, I'm looking to it. It's so good. So that's uh, a testimony from yesterday. Yeah? That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Very good. Welcome. Any anything from Mommy Farah? Oh, actually, that's my other monitoring device. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure that person. I've never seen that. I've never seen that one before. Yeah, yeah. That's my my small thing. I I wanted. I was actually meant to take it off, but I I, I got busy. <laughs> sure, no problem. Uh, anyway, uh, we have Kuz Faro. Maybe they, he'd like to share something with us. A testimony, prayer request, experience. Experience. <laughs> well, it's the first time for me to be here. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I visited a meeting in 2001 with Pastor Charles in Belgium. And that was a, wow. very, a very special meeting, but 
since that time, I uh, uh, for for many years, I I never heard about uh, from him. Uh, but this year, uh, uh, once on a, spe on a special day, a special moment, he was there on the internet, and uh, I heard him again, and it was uh, it was really good, and I was enormous blessed by all the things he said. Uh, so I, I'm I'm very glad to to hear the the messages uh, in my car or uh, during uh, the evenings uh, because it's uh, it's it's amazing all all the things uh, all the, the 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 revelation and so on. I'm really blessed by it. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Do you have well, his YouTube channel? What, what, what was the question, please? Do you his have YouTube? Apostles YouTube channel? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So you have endless uh, messages you can listen oh, to yes. and watch. And, oh, good. Every, I'm happy. Yes, every that's... day. <laughs> <laughs> good, to, to, good to listen to messages, even if you, if you heard them before. It yes. really just marinates your spirit and your heart. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it just it just really deep brings it deeper. Yes. So we all we all do listen to him very yeah. very often, obviously yeah. every day, and even the same message more than once. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. Then you have the visual impact. That's even better. So that's mm. why I offered you the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Praise God. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. And how did you reconnect it to or connect it with Alexander? Uh, I, I uh, one day I uh, decided to be on Facebook again. I was in the past on Facebook, but it was too it took too much time to be on Facebook. Yeah. I had over three thousand people uh, on Facebook who uh, followed me. Uh, so once I, I stopped it but uh, again I uh, I, I uh, activated my account and uh, immediately uh, Pastor Charles was there on, on my Facebook so that <laughs> that that was amazing too and uh, yeah. the second time the uh, Alexander was in in uh, was in, on my Facebook uh, I saw him so I, uh, I I made directly contact with him on Facebook and uh, in that time, I also registered register for the, the School of the Spirit. Uh, now, uh, not, not all the meetings I've uh, seen already, because uh, something went wrong, I think, uh, because uh, I, I had no uh, uh, access to the, to the meetings, but uh, <laughs> things will go. Will will uh, will go right in the in the future, I believe. Praise God. Yeah. Well, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So I I had the courage uh, this day to of yesterday to ask Alexander again, and uh, now I'm here. <laughs> it's 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 really it's wonderful. Welcome. Hmm. Welcome. God has His perfect timing, doesn't He? That's sure. I know. Praise God. I know. I have also uh, experienced that uh, during the years. For sure. That's yes. Wonderful. Do you have a church to go to? Yes. Uh, I go to a church in uh, Vladingen. That's near uh, Rotterdam. Okay. Church of uh, John T. L. Maasbach. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay, it's it's a fine church, uh, but it's it's not not like uh, Pastor Charles preached. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's more maybe I can say it's it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, controlling and 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 uh, much uh, praying and not much happening not much much action 
Yeah, you understand what I mean, I hope. Yeah, yeah. You need the move, moving of the Holy Spirit. You need to yes. have the, yeah, the activity and the energy of the Holy Spirit. So, well, yeah. you know, as long as uh, God keeps you there, fine. But um, you mm. might want to look for a place that's more happening. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's just online, because I know, um, of course, I'm sure Alexander um, told you already that they have a wonderful group that... Um, I don't know mm -hmm. how far you guys live from each other, but even I'm sure you can uh, make some arrangements to join online. So I'm sure you guys are already communicating that. Yeah. But even online is better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I live uh, 60, about 60 kilometers southwest of Rotterdam, near yeah. the shore. Okay. And, and we Alexander. can always join online. Alexander is, uh, uh, I think, in, in the in the east of of uh, of the Netherlands, near near Arnhem. Is that right, uh, Alexander? Oh, maybe he's not. He's not listening. Yeah, he needs to unmute. He's uh, uh, in, Yeah, no. I, I, I know of offshore very and, and we live in the neighborhood of Ar Arnhem. That's that's correct. But okay. I come from the Hague, so I know the offshore okay. very well. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so so we, we will call call each other this week before I go to Africa. So okay. so in contact, yes? That's very fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Holy Spirit is wonderful to make connections and also um you know, reconnecting us with, with people that need to be connected and also, um, you know, cutting people off who are not supposed to be in our life. So that's mm. one of the things that I have noticed. Yeah. That it's always changing, but it's always for the better. And uh, obviously Absolutely. we don't hold that's on right. to people that are not supposed to be in our life. We only hold on to people that God wants us to move forward with. And, uh, you know, people you see here and, of course, around the Apostle, we are all moving towards the same direction and have the same calling. So it's important to surround ourselves with people who believe in our calling and who are moving in the same direction because it gives us, um, obviously it lifts us and also lets us practice our gift as well as receive from others. Yeah. And uh, just want to encourage everyone to, uh, not, not only you, of course, but um, everyone to don't hold on to people who are not supposed to be in your life. Because uh, God has his perfect people in the future. When you step into it, they're already waiting for you there. And mm -hmm. all of these beautiful people, uh, maybe some years ago, I never met them. You know, maybe some years ago, they yeah. were not in my life. But now they are. Yeah. And they are. It's just, it seems like we have never known time that we, we didn't have each other. <laughs> it seems like we've always yeah. known each other. So God just has this special connection. But it feels like you've always known each other mm. all your life. That's That's right. Right. It's That's never right. the length of a relationship. It's always no. the depth of it. Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. That, that's right, Rika. What you're saying. Sometimes there are people you just connect with people, like even briefly, like even within a week, and it seems like they've, they've always been there. It's like they've always been there yeah. because you have the same purpose, and then you get connected at the right time for such a time as this. I like I, I like to call it because actually that's what it is. Because sometimes you hold on to people who have in the past, but if you look at it, they probably were slowing you down. Yeah, you well, down. this come and around for a season. Either it's helping season. them or it's helping you. It's helping the bottom line is don't hold on to people because God, we just we, we're moving forward to our who are following our destiny and people are going yeah. to be rendered to us maybe some for a season some for a time but some people i know for sure forever like my family is forever sure i mean you guys <laughs> mm. oh, yes. uh, you know, yeah. it's it's a uh, it's a True. beautiful thing and uh, the point is not to hold on to something or to someone that god doesn't really have much future for in your future and True. just Trust the Holy Spirit to guide you in that way. And if they need to leave, that's mm -hmm. fine too, because that's their season in your life may be over. And God will replace them or place someone else on their stead in your life who will help you equally better, much better actually than the person who yeah. left. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's all good. 
It's all yeah. good. Yeah. Amen. 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 Anything else, Pastor? No, that's it for me. Nothing much, nothing more. Well, if no one else has anything else, I need to get back to work. <laughs> Making sure the team is doing very well. And uh, you guys will have a wonderful time in Africa, I'm sure. And uh, God bless you. And we are going to meet next Tuesday. Yes, we'll be here. Okay. Looking forward to it already. Okay. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor okay. Marjorie. Thank you so much, Rick. Uh, oh, no, uh, Abraham, Alexander. Please send our love to Frida, of course. Thank you, Coach, for joining. Thank you, Martha Green, for joining. And thank you, Anna, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much, Pastor Marjorie. It was a wonderful teaching. Thank you so much. Yes. Always a pleasure with you all. Thank you. Amen. God bless okay. you. Love you all. Bye. Thank Have you. Bye. 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 Okay. Anna, would you like to close with the grace? Oh, she left. Okay, she left already. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.